Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Assalamu alaikum. In this kind of chromatography, this is sometimes called ligand uh, protein interaction chromatography, or you can say the affinity chromatography. In this format, the beads are attached with ligands of specific proteins. If we want to separate specific protein from its crude mixture, we use this kind of columns. When the mixture is added to the top of this column and solution is poured through the pump, the protein are bound to its receptor and does not elute out while all the rest of the protein are eluted in different test tubes. At the end, we can add the solution that is containing a lot of ligands and thus the ligand requirement of the protein is fulfilled and they are eluted out. We can also change the pH of the solution so that the ligand protein interaction is decreased and the proteins are loaded after the rest of the protein have been separated. Protein can be separated by the characteristic electrophoresis. For example, the protein crude extract does have a volume in the range of like 1.4 liter and it does have total 10,000 mg of proteins. And the activity of a specific protein is usually 100,000. But the specific activity like units of an enzyme present per milligram of protein is very low. In the ammonium sulfate kind of purification, we get this kind of enzyme specificity that is increased a, a little. But in the ion exchange chromatography, we do have 200 units per milligram of a specific enzyme. In the size exclusion chromatography, we do get 600. And in the affinity chromatography, we get the 15,000 units per milligram of total protein after the protein have been separated we have to check their molecular weight we can check the molecular weight of protein by using the STS page and we can use Kumasi brilliant plus staining for the detection on the STS page gel we load different samples in the wells that are present in the STS and we provide the negative electric field on top and the positive electric field in the bottom and the protein that are all containing negative charge because of the STS moved from negative electrode to the positive electrode and are separated out. These are the bands that correspond to the REC A protein of E. coli and you can see the ammonium sulfate has done that much of purification that we can get a specific band while the crude extract has so lot of many bands along with the REC A protein band and we can see anion exchange is doing that much purity and the cation exchange is doing that much purity and the purified protein that has been loaded in the last well is showing this kind of band and the first lane is showing the marker all the bands all the letters bands are of specific molecular weight so if we elute a specific protein but we don't know its molecular weight we can find its molecular weight on depending upon its electrophoretic mobility for this purpose we run the known protein in the first well and the unknown protein in the second well like myosin is 200 kilodalton the beta glycoside is 116 kilodalton oval albumin has 45 kilodalton and lysozyme is showing 14.4 kilodalton so they do have a specific molecular weight and they do have the specific electrophoretic mobility. If we measure this distance for this myosin 200 crudalton protein, we can draw this relative distance that is traveled along the x-axis of a graph and we take the logarithm of its molecular weight and we draw on the y-axis. For the unknown protein, we can measure this distance. This distance is somewhere here for example we can draw one line uh, horizontally and this gives the logarithm of the molecular weight of unknown protein we take the anti log of this value and this will be the molecular weight of unknown protein so there is another powerful strategy for the separation of protein that is called the 2d electrophoresis so this kind of electrophoresis utilizes two kinds of properties of proteins for their good separation. Along one direction, it does separate the protein on the basis of on the basis of their isoelectric point. We get a strip that has different portions with different pH. We load 
first we load a protein sample on this side and we provide negative charge to this strip and the protein keep on moving from left to the right and they reside in the region of their isoelectric point this strip is then utilized and is put horizontally on top of an SDS picture then we provide the negative electrode on top and the positive electrode on the bottom and then these proteins that are present in the strip start moving from the strip into the gel and move their mobility is based upon their molecular weight along the first direction they move depending upon their isolated point while in the second direction they moved along the gel depending upon their molecular weight so this way we can get a fairly good separation of different proteins even having the same molecular weight the structure of proteins the protein do have a primary structure a secondary structure a tertiary and the quaternary primary structure of protein consists of amino acid sequence for example this protein do have proline alanine asparagine lysine threonine asparagine valine lysine alanine alanine tryptophan glycine lysine and valine these sequence of amino acid are called the primary sequence of the protein secondary sequence consists of alpha helices and beta sheets while the tertiary sequence consists of all the three dimensional structure of all the alpha helices and beta sheets while the quaternary structure consists of more than one polypeptide chains we can see here the definition the primary structure consists of amino acid sequence while the secondary structure consists of the special arrangement of the backbone without regard of the conformation of its side chain. Tertiary structure consists of three dimensional structure of the entire polypeptide including its side chain while the tertiary structure consists of two or more polypeptide chains. This is again here alpha helices this is the primary structure this is the alpha helices secondary structure this is tertiary structure and this is the quaternary structure of actually hemoglobin protein consisting of two alpha subunits and two beta subunits you can see here different kind of forces exist in the proteins like the hydrogen bond the hydrophobic attractive interaction the disulfide bridges and the ionic bond so there are some enzymes that can cleave the peptide at a specific loci like the trypsin from the bovine can cleave the C terminal of lysine and arginine residue that are present in any protein and you can see the pepsin can cleave the N term of the leucine, phenylalanine, tryptophan and tyrosine. So function of a protein depends on its amino acid sequence. So protein differ in their function because they do have different composition and different number of amino acids. So some of the protein do have small defect of one or two amino acid and causes a disease. Sickle cell anemia is the example of such disease. And the, some of the diseases are because of the large lesion of a polypeptide chain like Duchenne muscular dystrophy is example of such disease. An estimated 20 to 30 percent proteins of all humans are polymorphic, but they do not have much bad effect because these kind of mutations are not lethal. But sometimes there is a crucial region that is present in a protein, and such regions are very important for their functioning. Such region present in such proteins are called the conserved regions. I give you one example here for the disulfide bridges that are present in the bovine insulin it does have two interchain disulfide bridges but one interchain disulfide bridge so in order to find the characteristic of protein we have to get the amino acid sequence in finding the sequence the first method is Fred Sanger method in this method the first amino acid of the polypeptide chain is derivatized with the help of any of these three compounds after the first amino acid is derivatized, this amino acid is cleaved selectively with the use of anhydrous acid and then its identification is done. But this method cannot find the sequence of more than 40 amino acid in succession. So we have to break the bigger polypeptide chain into the smaller ones. 
for example we trypsinize the this polypeptide chain with the help of trypsin enzyme and we obtain the sequence of each of the cleaved fragment after the trypsinization we obtain this sequence for the first cleaved fragment and the second for the third and the for the fourth we already know that trypsin can cleave either at the C terminal of arginine or lysine so one two three these three cannot be the C terminal peptide but only this one can be the C terminal peptide so that's why peptide 2 is the C terminal peptide and we already know that the N terminal peptide is known to be the glycine that is already shown here so that's why we know that the peptide cleaved peptide 3 is present at the end term and the rest of the order of cleaved peptide can only be found if we cleave the initial polypeptide with the use of a different enzyme like cyanogen this is the depiction of Fred Sanger method in which the polypeptide chain is treated with phenyl isothiocyanate and the first amino acid is is derivatized and this derivatized amino acid is cleaved with the help of anhydrous acid and then separated by the use of solvent extraction and then identified and rest of the chain is then again processed starting from the first step and second step so this method tells us how to break the disulfide bridges there are two methods in the first method we perform the oxidation by the use of performic acid in the second method reduction is performed by dithiothiol disulfidyl groups can make the disulfide bridges again so that's why carboxymethylation is performed with the help of iodoacetate so mass spectrometry is one of these uh, most powerful technique for the identification of small peptides and also for the determination of molecular weight it is highly accurate method in this method first of all the big peptides are broken down into the smaller ones and then they are ionized it utilizes the ionization of the peptide and then these ionized molecules are passed through the mass analyzer are separated based on their mass to charge ratio and this highest molecular weight peak is called the molecular ion peak and rest of the peaks show the fragmentation pattern of this peptide Mass spectrometry can also be utilized to find the sequence of amino acids. In for this purpose, the the peptides are charged and passes through the mass analyzer, and then they are collided with each other so that they are broken down and their fragmentation pattern is obtained. Here, in this case, this 20 amino acid containing peptide has been analyzed with the use of mass spectrometry, and 1997 highest molecular weight peak gives the molecular weight of this peptide. And after the breakage of first glycine, the minus 57 of the molecular weight of this original peptide occurs and in success successive breakdown of each of the amino acid from the end term, there is a successive decrease in the molecular weight of the peak. In order to synthesize small peptides, we make use of FMOC. The first amino acid is treated with FMOC and then it is treated with insoluble polystyrene beads and then another reaction is performed so that FMOC molecule is removed from this amino acid. Let's consider the second amino acid that is bound to the FMOC then it is treated with DCC. Finally we get this species that is containing the second amino acid. This species and this species is then treated together and you can see this is the peptide bond that has been generated. In this way we keep on extending this number of amino acids we can synthesize the small peptides. Consensus sequence and sequence logos. Sequence logos are used when there is a diversity in the amino acid of a peptide. For example, we have a peptide that is consisting of 8 amino acids. Its first position, for example, does have the glycine and the alanine in different individuals, but second, third, fourth, and fifth position has been taken by any of the 20 amino acids and sixth position is for sure is taking all the time the glycine and the seventh position is taken all the time by the lysine and the seventh position is taken by threonine and 
setting, threatening and setting. If an amino acid is present with 100% possibility, then this amino acid will be taking all the space from 0 up till the 4th scale. If the amino acid is only occurring in 50% of individuals and another amino acid is present in only 25% individuals, then we can give this amino acid 25% space and 50% space and rest of the space has been left blank because this space was weakened in 25% of the individuals. And here case is again same like this serine is taking 25% of the space because it is present in 25% individuals and threonine in 50% individuals and 25% space is blank at the amino acid number 8 for this polypeptide chain. So some of the rules for the sequence logos are that the polar amino acids are shown in green while the basic amino acids are shown in blue and the acidic one in red and hydrophobic amino acids are shown in black. When we align the sequence of amino acids for different proteins we sometimes come across gaps. We align amino acids that are same in front of each other and we leave the gaps as such. When we align the amino acid sequence of proteins in present in different species, we come across some of the time some specific signature sequences that are present only in certain classes of species. For example, we when we align the EF1 alpha, we come across that 12 amino acids are only present in archaea and eukarya, but these are not present in prokaryotes. So this kind of sequence is called the signature sequence that are specific for a certain species or certain class of organisms. In order to find the phylogenetic relation of different bacteria, for example, we utilize the GROW EL class of protein to align their amino acid and we find the similarity matrix and on the basis of their similarity, we drew the phylogenetic tree. This phylogenetic tree shows one class that is containing cyanobacteria and another group that is coming from this node is the gram positive kind of bacteria is falling together and we can see proteo and we can see proteobacteria are falling together in this way the bacteria that are coming from one nodes are genetically more related and those bacteria that are coming from different nodes are are less related for example these two classes of bacteria are very much related because they are coming from same node but this one is different from this class of bacteria because they are coming from different stem and different nodes. This is another phylogenetic way that has been drawn by the use of amino acid sequence of proteins. So this kind of so this phylogenetic tree is showing that one class is eukarya, archaea and the bacteria. This phylogenetic tree, this phylogenetic tree also shows that eukarya and archaea are more related as compared to the bacteria. So general classification of proteins, some proteins are simple proteins that are containing only polypeptide chains and the histone is the example of those proteins and lipoproteins are those proteins that has lipid conjugate with them. For example, LDL, mucins are class of glycoproteins. Goals of protein, they are used in the form of enzymes. They are used in the form of enzymes like amylases, hormones like insulins, structure protein like keratin, like contractile protein like myosin and the transport protein like hemoglobin and defensive protein like antibody. Thank you for watching.